And now, we're on to the category for the Good Guy Greg Award. And the winner is Mark Emery, a.k.a. Prince of Pot, who is a cannabis policy reform advocate from Canada and is currently serving five years in the United States federal prison for selling cannabis seeds. That shit is weak. Let's put one in the air for my homeboy. Keep your head up, my nigga. <laughs> Fuck the police coming straight from the underground. <laughs> Live times. Good day, everybody. Welcome to the show. It must be Wednesday here in Vancouver. I'm Marijuana Man. This is Al the Alchemist. Welcome to the show. Uh, I was... Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> you just dozed off there for a second. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you could all join us today. We uh, joined got us. Another beautiful day here in vancouver and uh, we're pumped to be on the second floor of the bcmp headquarters now a bunch of people in the chat we'll get to you guys in a sec but uh, let's see who might be on camera four today camera four what? yep now there's ah. a that's an unusual shot eh it's very very um, high contrast well it's very classroom <laughs> it is very classroom. very classroom. You know what I mean? I'm going to make a small adjustment. Talk amongst yourself. <laughs> Hi, Pod TV. How's it going? Back to school. Huh? Is it that time already? I don't know anymore because I don't go to school. But I quit school um, yeah, that's about Thanks. six weeks into grade 10. So, yeah, for those of you yeah. who are new on the planet, that's Hi, Jeremiah and Mr. Mars. <coughs> Hello. Um, and, yes, today is the back-to-school special. Now, I think it's special because the kids have gone back to school. <laughs> <laughs> really. They're not out on the streets <laughs> and on the buses and in the stores anymore, <laughs> so that's good. But a lot of them come here to the Vapor Lounge as well, though. A lot of students do. We require they to be at least 18. Reminds me of an old Peter, Paul, and Mary song. <laughs> Where have all the children gone? Back to school. <laughs> <laughs> to the vapor lounge to, to for Puff the Magic Dragon. <laughs> I can't wait until they use that song in a commercial. They were stoned. <laughs> Two Peter, Paul, and Mary references in a row yep. off the top of our fucking heads. We're, we're on Who a could do fucking that? roll. That's for sure. So, yeah, we got Ginga in the house, Green hey, Supreme. Holy smokes. Mama Puff Puff, good to have you here. Can't read the next one because it's purple. Dr. Clone, I think it says. Can't read the purple names. Hard to read those purple names. It is, really. <laughs> but uh, I don't see purple actually very well. Yeah, we're here every week doing the best we can to wow. keep you up to date on uh, the important stories that have happened throughout the week in Marijuanaville. It's a very friendly place, Marijuanaville. Marijuana. Well, actually, no, there's a lot of cops. <laughs> See, it seems lately cops. there's a lot of busts in Marijuanaville. Yeah. <laughs> well, we do. <coughs> we have a big not show. Not as, as in Margaritaville, but quite a few. <laughs> yeah, stuff. not nearly as many. <laughs> Got a big show planned for you today. Oh, no, wait, that's not this show. <laughs> no, no, that's the other one that we're doing. Yeah, that was no, we're, we're doing another show after this that doesn't broadcast anywhere. We don't even film it. No, this is our uh, nobody shows up. It's just a private thing that happens mostly in our heads. Yeah, but it's a big, big show. Yeah. Now, uh, a lot of the time, Huge. too, you'll notice out there on the internets that uh, stuff is in high def. Um, we don't broadcast in high def because we ourselves are not in high def. No. We're uh, all quite pixelated. <laughs> I'm extremely we pixelated. We are broadcasting right now. <laughs> in high def, but this is what it turns out to be. So I'm only deaf in one ear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Moderately deaf. What? But it's a high def. <laughs> <laughs> 
So yeah, we got <coughs> S in the house. Fireman. Valley Boy 73. Yeah, my shirt. I got weed all over it. You can buy those uh, at our store, cannabisculture.com slash store, or come on down here. I think they got them on the rack. They got them on the rack. I know they do. There's a hoodie rack. version, too. Sounds like a thing that you torture somebody on. It there is. is a hoodie version. You should see what they do to these shirts. <laughs> so, yeah, that was pretty Horrible cool. Things. of uh, Snoop, <laughs> Snoop Lion. Uh, oh, yeah. Snoop Lion opening the show with uh, his tribute to Mark. Snoop that Lion. was pretty cool. I don't know. That was from a, some web page, uh, R Trees, they're called. It's, um, it's on Reddit. It's their, it's their category of marijuana. Yeah. Yeah. It's all about trees, not marijuana. <laughs> How mm. tricky. Yeah. But uh, Snoop Lion... That was pretty cool. Yeah, that's really that was cool. pretty cool. Mark's pretty pumped about it. I bet. And um, yeah, we'll put one in the air for our homeboy anytime. Woo. Here, yeah. here, let's let's send yeah, one that's out. That's cool, Snoop. Let's send one out. Yeah, I don't know really what that was all about, but uh, you know, I, Snoop Lions out there. He Snoop was just in Vancouver recently, so I, I doubt. You know, I think the guys at Reddit probably gave Snoop the text to read or whatever for that whole video. Oh, if you yeah. watch the whole thing, you can tell he's... Absolutely. Yeah, well, except for maybe his reactions to stuff that yeah. looked more comfortable for him yeah, to be exactly. saying what he said. But, but he was here in Vancouver just a few weeks yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah, he, he played at Malcolm Bowl. He did, yeah, at Stanley Park. I had the chance yeah. to go to it. And, I, and I'm pretty sure Jason Wilcox did an interview with him. That, I want to find that. I haven't seen that. I'm not sure if he did, but he was he was saying how that'd be awesome. They they had well, some great, passes and Jason would have asked him some really great marijuana questions if he did. So I'd love to see that. We'll find that if it exists. I'll get a copy of it for you guys for sure. But yes. um, Snoop was but in the news the just today. Was awesome. It was a really good show. At He's got a big old bag of weed. <laughs> he was in yeah. the news today. Snoop, Snoop was in the, double in the news keeps today his weed in a plastic because, uh, bag because he made a wager on the uh, UFC fight. With a buddy of his <laughs> and uh, won himself a pound of marijuana. Oh, <laughs> <nice>. <laughs> Which he proudly uh, put up on Instagram, holding the big bag. So, yeah, Snoop Lion, he's out there. Everybody's out there, actually. They're uh, coming out of the closet really yeah. fast. Well, the people are dragging them out of the closet because it's popular. It's really popular in the media to talk about marijuana no matter how they can I'll, we'll talk here in a bit about this goofy story I came across and how convoluted it becomes about marijuana but uh, there's Tegan oh you look very safe today <laughs> she's got her, really safe. Helmet. her hash helmet on yeah she didn't ride her bike today though that's just her walking yeah. helmet yeah <laughs> smart to have she's used to bailing really hard though so you get so high and you just, you know, fall right There's over. a lot of stairs. <laughs> <laughs> I could have used one of those when I was having all those seizures. Fuck. Yeah, just, uh, I should have been just been wearing a crash helmet the whole time. Well, why not, man? Wow. You can get, you can get helmets that look like a head of hair, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those, are, those don't look good on people. <laughs> no, it really not. makes them look like they have a misshapen head. <laughs> I saw a kid in a one afro. time in Toronto. I an afro winter. helmet. Afro helmet. I saw this guy who had fur earmuffs, but the earmuffs are the exact same color as his hair. So it <laughs> looked like he had big Looked like he had a really, a really overweight mullet. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It was, <laughs> that's just the Holy thing smokes, that's an overweight mullet. <laughs> overweight mullet. <laughs> so, yeah. That mullet weighs 18 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you guys all from today in the chat? Let's see if we can figure that out. All right. Come on. Georgia. Nice. Poster IP addresses. Earth. Doubt it. <laughs> Abby. Harewood. Old Dominion. Wow. Old Dominion. places I've never heard of before. Now I'm from Vancouver. <laughs> Hamilton. Where is this Old Dominion located? That's like... Green Supreme said your office. It's in, in the office. new world. Really? He's in my office? Why doesn't he come down here? Lynn Valley. The South, Appalachia, nice. Wow. He's camera. The Orion shot. system. Wow, they're out there. Some of these people. Can't can't say there's the smartest answer. I can't say that. <laughs> What's going on, Neil? 
Well, uh, oh, yeah. we, uh, all my quarantines. Oh, nice. <laughs> all 85. We continue How sensible to, BC uh, going? Yeah, the Sensible BC campaign has kicked into full gear, yep. high gear, if you will. Um, they're very actively out there everywhere in BC, so if you are in the province, uh, look for them. Hunt them down. We need more you can always use more help. And we always need more contact them. And locations in ridings across the province that are willing to host canvassers and be permanent locations where people can come and sign up. So if Ooh. you know anybody with a business or That's any a great idea. location, sign up for Sensible BC. Get them coming into your business. Tell your friends who have businesses that it's a big draw because it is where when I walk home from work now, I live right here in Vancouver on the in the West End now. And uh, when I walk home, there's one of these spots that has a sensible BC thing open where you can just go and sign up anytime. And it's packed with people. They, people go in there, they go to sign up, and then they stop and have a beer or whatever. So it's kind of a cool thing to do. That is. They need your help, and it can also help you if you have a business. Yeah, we're uh, a location here at the Vapor Lounge. Come on down. Uh, we've got uh, canvassers ready to sign you up, usually day and night. But um, you can sign up to be a canvasser as well. But um, also check out sensiblebc.ca and uh, get all the lowdown from them. Dana's out there every day. We see the cannabis all over the city, and I suspect it'll be traveling around the province at some point. So look for that in your neighborhood. There was a funny cartoon in the province newspaper this past week where two old ladies sitting on the bus and remarking how uh, it seemed like the bus company had really uh, improved the service. She said, uh, yeah, and the other one said, yes, uh, someone gave me smokes, and uh, the driver was really nice, and the other one said, yeah, and it smells so sweet in here, and then they cut to an outside shot of uh, the cannabis. <laughs> so... Um, it's getting big press throughout the province and well, I don't know about the rest of the country, but certainly every day I read something about it. It's very popular for the media to be reporting about and they're doing their very best to try to remain unbiased. <laughs> Why the fuck they have to do that with this story <laughs> when yeah, they don't course. seem that way any other time, but no. uh, now... Right, they're always trying to show both sides and uh, you know, it's just such bullshit that they it's not it like is. they turn there's on you. There's only one side on this, this issue because as opposed to the HST referendum, there's no opposition that's registered against the sensible DC position. That's amazing. That's right. That's amazing. Yeah. So here's something I thought about the other day in terms of this, the police association now talking about this ticketing scheme and blah, 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 blah. I thought, I thought to myself, yeah. For the people to get their voice heard, we've got to go out and get 400 fucking thousand signatures. And the police, when they want to do something, they just say, here's what we want to do. This is what we're doing. There's no <laughs> vote. There's nobody. Right? Here's what we want to do. Scary. And Stephen Harper snaps right up. He said, yeah, we're thinking about that right away. And you go, what the fuck? <laughs> Half the population wow, of we Canada some numbers. said they, they would <laughs> like marijuana legalized, but he didn't snap right up and go, gee, I'll think about that. No. Cops say, we want to write tickets, and he goes, yeah, fuck that. This I is know, such it, bullshit. Well, it's because he knows that he can turn it into another system of manipulation and taxing and people oh, yeah. and money and getting more people in jail, probably. Yeah. It's, a no, it's a de facto yeah. type of criminalization. So this is what they're up to here now, is they, they see the legalization coming, the change in the tide. They, the cops all over over the world now are scrambling to figure out how they can fit into the new scheme here. How can we find our place? That's why there's all this stuff about teens out there, the danger to teens, so they'll put themselves into that position and say, okay, well, we'll protect your teens then at least. All right? It was just like Harry Anslinger at the end of the alcohol prohibition when they said, well, alcohol is legal now. Harry, you're out of work. He said, oh, no, 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 let me look after the drugs, those dangerous drugs. So they just shifted his department with a new name, and they'll do that too. They'll give him a new name, and they'll still keep their jobs, is what they're all crying about right now. So. So that's what we've seen is no tickets. No fines. No, no tickets. Ounce. No. Thanks, guys. One ounce. See you later, Neil. Out of here? All right, Neil. Take care, Neil. See you, Neil.
And anybody who does want to sign up as a canvasser for Sensible BC can visit sensiblebc.ca slash canvas. Get info there on how it's done. Even if you just want to get your family members signed up or whoever. Well, I think it's very exciting times. They've made it extremely, extremely difficult for you to achieve this. And I'm not sure. Like, It's not like they're going to be inundated with referendums if they made it a little bit easier. But holy moly, it's just such a Herculean task. Thank God for uh, Bob Herb. And his oh, financial sure, like, assistance to <clears throat> because I'm not sure how else it could That's, be done. Yeah. And Dana's crew that has pulled this together and are doing a great job. So, yep. send them some support, even if you don't live here. Uh, it will have a ripple effect across Canada to some degree. So, we're trying to do what we can here. And it's actually pretty exciting to be kind of at ground level and uh, having these people around and feeling the excitement. Yeah. So. Bob's helped. We're so doing what we can, crazy. you know. Yeah, that Which Bob one? Bob Herb thing is a crazy serendipitous serendipitous event that just came out of nowhere. Man, what luck. Well he's and he's been helping people like coast to coast. Yeah. You know, like he has. Yeah, he's been he's cannabis, been, all cannabis related. Hey, we'll give you know. Getting ready for the next round of four twenties as well. I've heard that um, there's positive movements forward on some of that stuff. So there's going to be another, you know, he's going to be supporting 420s again, I'm pretty sure, across Canada. Yep. He did last year. He <laughs> paid um, something like $10,000 to each of the events across Canada. He paid for materials. He also oh, he um, a lot. petitioned us to design a site for him. I don't think we anybody ever got paid. We didn't really want to, but um, me and Myrna and Goodwin put together... A 420 rally site that was pretty awesome. Nice uh, for all of them too. So yeah, he's definitely been pioneering a lot of stuff. And he, Bob Herb, did this stuff before he was rich as well. He also gave money when he didn't have a lot. Ran for the marijuana party. That's right. Yeah. So he's well, no, the he's not the rhinoceros there. party. I'm not too sure about that. Was, was he not? Oh yeah, he might have had some involvement with them, but he was definitely a marijuana party guy. Yeah. I'm pretty sure he he had an affiliation with the rhinoceros party. I think party. he did. I'm, I remember some about that. Well, speaking of, speaking they wanted of to turn the political platform into a sun deck. <laughs> yeah. Well, here's a party affiliation for you. Um, this week, Stephen Harper. He was in. Uh, he's in BC. Oh, we saw his face at the football game. Boo! On <laughs> Sunday, I don't watch football, but Willie and Laurent, who work in the lounge, went to the football game, so we had it on. See if we could see them, but in fact we had to look <laughs> hey, at Stephen Harper's are. face. They're right behind, right behind Harper. So he's out here in British Columbia, if he still isn't, but uh, hidden somewhere. Now he made a speech in uh, West Kelowna. He's hidden, hidden, hiding out at the Patterson compound. <laughs> and uh, with Cheney and Bush. <laughs> in his in his speech, he made a reference to. Uh, <coughs> John A. Macdonald, and here's what he said. He said, Sir John A. spoke to British Columbians about things that matter, about jobs and prosperity, about a Canada united and strong, about economic growth, not grow-ups, about a national dream, not a pipe dream. This is what he said. Jeez, who wrote this one for him? <laughs> I don't know. It's the guy who He's got fucking, a whole team of red tape yeah. probably back there. It sounds like the last spike on fucking CBC or whatever. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, how Canadian is that shit? But at any rate, when you're kind of tearing sounds it apart like a little bit. Sounds like one of the writers from Dawson's Creek. <laughs> just terrible stuff. When you actually look at what he was saying. Um, <laughs> hey, you guys aren't Here's the things that matter. This is what they wrote the speech, right? And here's what they decided is about what matters and it's jobs and prosperity that's coming from oil yes right the only jobs they ever talk about are oil jobs and pipeline jobs this is the prosperity that he's talking about and about a canada united and strong that's the army all right that's the warfare part of his program right it's well, they, oil war and not grow ups Britain, and it's Britain about reclaimed, fighting uh, drugs. reclaim the canadian army eh? They took they took his army away from him technically. Yeah. They're now the Royal Canadian Army again. Gave them a bath. <laughs> well, well happy 420. By the sound Hooray. of that sound, it must be 420. We got but this. Johnny McDonald was a drunk. <laughs> and 
While he was alive, marijuana was legal. Steve <laughs> did not. Yeah, yeah, he, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't think about that no. at all, eh? So um, it's quite possible <laughs> that he was he did consume marijuana. He didn't have to talk about grow ups because because uh, there were it, it there was, was just no yeah. such invented word. You guys made that up. It was it was a it was a plantation. How about a national dream. What's your national dream, Steve? You've never ever once uttered that to anyone, except I want to sell my oil. You gotta sell my oil. Let's go to war. No, I won't legalize drugs. Let's go to war. You gotta buy my oil. <laughs> That's all he ever says. So, what the fuck? <laughs> he just said it there. Now, also in this fucking little speech, he said, now, <laughs> I don't know. He said, Harper thanked fellow conservatives who were behind a bill that allowed him to bring BC wine back to Ottawa. No. He said, Happy now, of course, away. he said, I know, I don't, you know, I don't drink alcohol, but I have a lot of friends who do. That's what Harper said. <laughs> he stumbled over I his bet. words to get it out of his mouth. But he was drunk right there. The he was there. hammered. Yeah, there, there's tons of pictures all over the place of him drinking alcohol. Yeah, I don't and drink. During the Olympics, he made a wager <laughs> with Obama during the hockey game for a case of beer. Yeah, what in the hell is with that? So, it's a Canadian thing to do. No, I just don't. Why would he lie about it? Though he's been, you know, there's photos of him drinking everywhere. It's a stupid thing to say. Well, he's just wanting you to know. Well, that what he's doing he, doesn't he make fired, sense. <laughs> he fired that last group of consultants, and they, the, the new group, don't, they, they didn't study what he did before. Well, so. No, I haven't seen a lot of backlash from the press about Harper lying his ass off. Maybe nobody even realizes it. Well, but now, but get this, though. Because they're all drunk, when too. When Trudeau just recently, did you see this one where they were going after him for his comments about how many arrests were made versus how many charges were laid or whatever? And they, he got the number wrong. He said the number, and it was the other one rather than one. So it was like a, you know, it's a splitting of hairs thing. The number is still yeah, outrageous they're gonna be and all huge. Over that. But they, the press was all over that, just one little slip-up. <laughs> Harper is there saying outright, I don't drink booze, but yet there's photos of him all over the fucking place <laughs> doing the same thing. Give me a break. Well, that's because the country's soaked in <laughs> booze. Now, when Stephen Harper talks about marijuana and he emphatically says, no, we'll never legalize it. And the reason that he gives is to protect our youth. Well, now I looked up at our youth <laughs> and to see if they're they seem to be safe. He looked them up on Facebook. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Turns out they're not. Ooh. Turns out they're drunk. Yeah, they're hammered. <laughs> and uh, They're all drinking interprovincial wine. Yeah. 83% of grade 12 Little Ontario butter. students admit to drinking. 49% of those admit to binge drinking. All right. The greatest, wow. uh, the largest cause of teen death in Canada is car crashes related to alcohol. Now... At the very same time, you've got the Prime Minister making a wager over a hockey game to a president of the fucking free world, and they got to do it with a case of beer yeah. right in front of the kids. Fucking drug addicts. Like, essentially, it's an amateur sporting event, the Olympics. In that case, the hockey, it's not, it's a gray area, but uh, there's a lot of kids watching. Idolizing Sidney Crosby as he scored the winning goal in overtime. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Brought to you by fucking beer. And you wonder why they have so much problem with kids drinking. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. It's Molson's Hockey Night in Canada. Yeah, there is no sport that Say your no child more. will play that is not sponsored by booze. Virtually, any sports hero they will idolize is sponsored by booze. Maybe one day it'll booze. be like that for pot. Everything will be like... You know, Acapulco Gold. Oh, gosh. In Canada. No, that'd scare me to death. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, brought to you by Sativa. <laughs> yeah, Don Cherry. <laughs> yeah. His suits will look even crazier well, now. Yeah. <laughs> well, he'd be a more mellow guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He'll finally relax. <laughs> yeah. won't be any, he won't be very interesting if he does, I guess. I played a lot of hockey when I was a Ute. 
and I had the opportunity to play it while intoxicated on alcohol. And well, I was I was gonna say hockey is way easier to play when you're stoned. Uh, I'll tell you, it wasn't that I didn't play very well when I was drunk, or had a couple beers, but I'll tell you, when I was smoking hash, I was Boom. a fucking In superstar. Oh, were you ever? Wow. It was, uh, you had deadly accuracy and great anticipation of what was going to happen in I the game. I didn't play a lot of hockey, but I used their shacks to roll weed <laughs> and hash. <laughs> wow. I did speed skating for a brief moment. But, so the kids are out there. Alcohol is advertised everywhere now. It would seem to me, and I pay attention to these things, that uh, the, the rules around Advertising alcohol have been relaxed. I'm beginning to see more and more beer ads, and I don't give a fuck really, but it's just here, <laughs> this is what I see. I see more and more beer ads that do not even include the please drink responsibly anymore. For some reason, they're even dropping that. I think that they made it so... They're like, yeah, don't even drink responsibly. Yeah. We lose money when you drink responsibly. <laughs> yeah. Insurance companies lose money. Repair companies lose money. Jim Funeral Beam. homes lose money yeah. when you drink responsibly. So please don't. Jim Beam <laughs> has to still include it. The hard whiskeys and shit that are plastered all over TV now have to include that too, but they've minimalized it so much. You can fucking barely see any warning. There's none on the bottle when you buy it. right? They want marijuana plastered all over the fucking thing with warnings, I'll bet, when it comes out. Ooh, it'll cause you to uh, talk like Snoop Dogg. <laughs> <coughs> Snoop Dogg. Yeah, something happened to Snoop over the years where he started to talk more and more like that and kind of like, oh, yeah. he's it's got his, he's gone a lot more mellow. He must it's be his steez. Yeah, heavy hash. He must be eating well, hash. He, he's, he's, been, he's been watching a lot more Bootsy Collins interviews. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. I bet he probably Can't has too. Yeah. Yeah. What you fizz him a nizzle? Bootsy baby. But Bootsy is hilarious. Bootsy invented all the lingo that Snoop uses. I guess that's probably where some it's of true. that comes from, isn't it? Well, yeah, Mama Puff Puff, Puff wants to know how Al's surgery went last week. When What's you up? weren't on the show. Oh, yeah, oh fuck. Surgery. It was successful. <laughs> I was uh, after it's a, a boy. Well, I I got this crazy tattoo going on and I started growing uh, demon wings so I was pretty I was pretty concerned had to go get them removed um, it's crazy huh. turned them into a pillowcase actually Very nice. demon wings you say <laughs> we didn't want to know what yeah, it was uh, those are really good but... for they're like five cents down at the uh, <laughs> yeah yeah demon wings at, the, at, uh, at hell's cafe yeah, yeah. <laughs> go to hell's cafe order up some demon wings yeah <laughs> a little too spicy for me. But. Can't smoke that many. I'll get a ram's horn with some uh, <laughs> some virgin's blood <laughs> and some demons. <laughs> yeah, it's just a Caesar. <laughs> what else did I run into it there? There was um, a story today about, and it's everywhere. It, the, the the internet's funny, right? You can see the same fucking story in a million places. Right, it just uh, it's out there on everybody's page. They just cut and paste, and there it is. Huffington Post just cuts and paste, puts it there. Yeah, you go over the log. You go what? Yeah. Huh. So news is uh, it's out there now, <clears throat> and you know cannabis culture. I was thinking about it today. That, that we're certainly on the caliber of fucking New York Times. They're not writing any news or cutting and pasting like everybody else. Well, we do we do both of those things. With us, aggregation is important because there's so much going on out there. And with the limited resources we have, we'd never be able to cover all of those things with our own reporting and stuff. Well, they and, don't. No, well, right. <laughs> They're just getting it off the well, wire and, and you know fucking what? extrapolating and a story. Here we go, David and overall, Malmo, I, I don't on think the phone. it's really a good thing. I think it's a bad thing because they're, the amount of money that's you're, being you're spent live on, on the, air. the press, the resources are going oh, down, oh, down, I, down. Down, hey, can I drop by tonight? All the time. And <laughs> seriously in Canada, for instance, <laughs> I'll call you later. <laughs> they uh, they did exactly this. All of the, rather than having editorials written all across Canada, different papers, they just have like you know one that comes out of the head office now instead. 
So there's not a lot less jobs for journalists and that kind of thing. It's really overall a bad trend in my opinion because journalists now, ha like there's bloggers instead of journalists and bloggers don't really yeah. get paid a lot of the time. And so the quality of their reporting isn't always as good. <laughs> oh yeah, it's just their opinion. Yeah, exactly. I've been suckered into quite a few stories with the headline and you go to it and you go, wow, this is just some blogger. Right. Well, and not to say that there's this not a lot of me. really kick-ass bloggers out there who who may not get paid at all, and they're doing way better than any paid journalist. But I mean, it's overall, if you don't have the resources to put into the time to do the research and all those things, then the quality of the reporting is going to go down. So yeah, it I'm, just becomes kinda, opinion. Yeah, I wish that the, there was definitely more money in journalism these days and out there, because it, though it seems like there's more opinions and voices coming from everywhere. The actual amount of real research going in is less, I think, than it was a few years ago. Well, the sad. amount of stuff. More, opi more opinions and less information. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> the amount of stuff that's that out there, though, like the, in this box, right? <laughs> there's, there's everything, right? And it, from one to another, they don't vary that much. No. Not too much, right? Exactly. <laughs> like we, so you go, wow. How many web pages are there, do you think? There's millions and millions and millions, right? So, fucking any subject, any picture, anything I've ever looked for has been there. Right? This has got to change the world <laughs> oh, yeah. so much. Well, like, I, when I was a kid, all that, not all of that, not even fucking a tenth of that was there, but it was in the <laughs> Encyclopedia Britannica that yeah. we never looked at or... Yeah, and that was only like, you know, maximum Didn't want to how know. many thousands of pages in the whole collection. And yeah. You couldn't really fit the heck Didn't of a lot care of that. to know about That was all the information stuff. in the world. That's all you needed. Yeah, that's right. Don't even don't even think about anything else. <laughs> don't worry about it. So you it's guys crazy. were talking about it before the show, how the conspiracy becomes like you can easily now if I want a conspiracy around my issue, I'll just start it myself. Just kick it off. Right? The mm -hmm. doozy too. It doesn't even matter. Like it's fucking. You could do four or five. We could sit around, and smoke joints, come up with four or five crazy things, and <laughs> and put them out. <laughs> yeah. And off they go. All right. Yeah. It's true. It's yeah, easy yeah. to orchestrate stuff like and that. And it doesn't matter because we don't have time anyway. We move on to something else. Right. Oh, yeah. There's always something. Right, generating, who knows? I don't know. I could sit at home. I don't even know if there's anything going on in Syria. I have not yeah, been there. Be totally different Just seen still photos, actually. No, and it's very true. And I mean, now here, stuff, I, I, have you ever seen the movie Wag the Dog? Oh, yeah. Yeah, and they kind of sum it up really in that movie how it's, it's quite easy to manipulate certain things, and especially when they own half the fucking yeah. media anyway. Hated well, if, it if you look at a lot of the Syrian footage, that. it all looks like it's taken out of context. Yeah. Right? That's they, what it, I they, they show too. they clearly show a military um, uh, ex, like atrocities. Uh, or no, no, no. What what's the word I'm looking for? Just like military exercises. tests. Yeah, military right. exercises. Right. Some so, some concrete shack blowing up, and yeah. and and then they clearly show like a whole unrelated <laughs> thing, inner city like. You know, they yeah. they show this. It's like footage from like the something Chilean way in the desert, in the taken from from far away on a tripod, and then something inner inner city with some guys laying on stretchers. And <laughs> yeah. it's like, yeah. come on, really? Some creative editing. Well, I got sucked. That's very uncreative editing. Right. <clears throat> well, and you know, I think a lot of the serious stuff is really lies because uh, this whole idea that it was the Syrian government. I mean, maybe it was them that was using the chemical weapons, but it's just as easy for me to believe that it was the other guys who used the chemical weapons to blame it on them. Like, of course, the one red line that Obama has, I, I think that's really. the one that they passed, but yet right afterwards they're willing to give up all chemical weapons they have right away to Russia. They never wanted to have anything to do with it. Like, it just seems They like, bought them all from the United States. Yeah, of course. And that's, Britain. That's how it always goes. Well, and that's goes. the biggest sham right? of this whole thing, is that the U.S. uses chemical setup. weapons, and so does their setup. client nations like Israel. Mm -hmm. White phosphorus and other horrible chemical weapons. So if that's their red line, they've crossed it themselves more than once. But Why at is any the rate, invading Israel. If they <laughs> really wanted themselves. to, they'd be there already. They're not looking for anybody's permission to do anything. There's something up here. They want to get into Iran somehow. They want. Some, there's something up. So, don't get distracted by stuff. Yeah. Right, big stories have come out, big fucking nothing stories. You watch out for 
what they're Look doing out for there, anything cause... Carrie's involved with. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, they they want to go to war. Carrie. They're all geared up for war, so yeah. I don't know. It's too complicated. And the, actually, the information that we get here is pretty biased to really say, hey, this is what I think about what's going on in the Middle East. That's what I think they said. <laughs> <laughs> right? The other side, I don't know. Because I'll bet when you go there, you talk <laughs> to those people, they'd say something different. Yeah. I'm not on anybody's side, but they'd say something different, I think. <laughs> I think they, yeah. And, you know, it's very singular well, here that... Uh, it's a messed up scene because what they want us to believe is that the Assad government isn't liked by the people and that the people are somehow going to support all these foreign fighters that they're bringing in. And that's what they're doing. They're bringing in all these foreign fighters from Saudi Arabia, from Turkey, Qatar, and other places. And that's who they, who, because the U.S. government just wants to overthrow the regime. This is what the U.S. does all around the world and has for so many years. Yeah, well, they're they not they friendly. Want. They're a rogue <laughs> nation. You just go and you change who's in charge there. It's kind of like you, uh, you, the United States is a rogue nation. Oh, it is the biggest <laughs> yeah. rogue nation. You know what well, I mean? Like yeah, they're the they're going around and they're just they're yeah they're it's it's what's going on is they're building an empire. There hasn't oh, it's been a massive empire. Yeah, that's what global. Putin said. No, no, he says is the, the empire is falling. <laughs> yeah, they're it's seriously falling? building a. Yeah. Well, wow. falling to who? Another like the Chinese? No, it's just crumbling. It's like a water empire. It's just like you look at history and what happened to Rome is happening to the United States. Sure, they're trying yeah. to reach out more and more, but it becomes harder like and Chomsky harder to, to remain. In control. I hope that that's true. Chomsky also said, "If uh, the government did 9/11, who cares?" Yeah, well, that's, uh, <laughs> that's a little silly. <laughs> Somebody had so to. Chomsky's well, yeah, 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 that's interesting. No. Well, no, yeah. it's it. I, 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 I see the I see the point there because either way, it's it's an atrocity. So to wh whoever did it, it doesn't matter. The oh, I think it matters to the people whose families were murdered on that day. Who did it? Well, I think they care. It was a question. He no, wasn't no, really a statement. No, nothing, he nothing just said, who cares? And people go, yeah, well, I do. And he goes, yeah, okay, good. <laughs> yeah, <he's just laughs> who cares? He's just trying to deflect from... He doesn't, no one doesn't really talk about stuff to do with the intelligence community that much. The, the real crimes of the intelligence community in the United States and elsewhere for some reason. He, Noam talks a lot about the crimes of the executive branches and the crimes. I mean, there's a lot of that other stuff in there, but for some reason he avoids it. Maybe because he doesn't want to get his head blown off. He doesn't want to have his heart blown up yeah. while he's out uh, strolling, strolling in the park. Yeah, he probably just wants to stay alive <laughs> to tell at least what he can, and you know. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I don't fault him for that too much. Wanting <laughs> to stay alive is okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> No, let's see. Here's a story that came out today. I think we're so on top of it. I don't know. The whole world uh, came up with this. Mar marijuana Policy Project actually came up with this list of uh, the 50 marijuana users who are unbelievably successful. Mm -hmm. Unbelievably successful is their claim. Believe let's it. name a strain, a strain after each one of them. <laughs> we'll make the Oprah purple. <laughs> well, number one I is like uh, Snoop Lion. Shouldn't uh, the Whippy yeah. be purple? All right. He's a Kush. Friends. For sure. Some sort of Kush. Snoop Kush, I think. Snoop? I don't know, man. He's kind of... I, I think he'd be like a... I don't know, like some kind of haze. Really? Well, nah. he's not built like a Kush. He's not Bill like a Kush. What no. are you talking about? His physique? But his, but he, he acts like he's is. been smoking a lot of Kush. Yeah, yeah, I don't know, man. Kush is like, lifestyle. if you smoke a lot of Kush, it just doesn't get you high anymore. Well, that's <clears> true. <throat> but the amount that that's, Snoop smokes... He's smoking a lot. I think smoke, just keeps smoking Snoop smokes more. a lot of right. weed. It's like Med Mark. Yeah. Yeah, he's like a Remo. <laughs> um, okay, maybe we'll come back to Snoop. and Maybe he's a hybrid. Yeah, yeah. It's like that a blueberry sense. or he's a <laughs> right. flow or something. The next guy's Rick Steves. Whatever it is, it's Steve I don't know him. Hey? Rick Steves? Yeah. He's yeah, he's a travel, big travel He was writer. actually here one time. Interviewed Mark. We were on his fucking travel oh, yeah. thing. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. He really helped them legalize pot in Washington. I wow. used cannabis all over too. the world, he said. Yeah. Rick Steves. He's now one of the board members of Normal. 
the executive, like the big U.S. Oliver, Oliver Stone. His last name is Stone, for fuck's sake. Oliver he just Stone. reminds me of old hash. Ollie Stone. He'd yeah. be like some old, did the JFK old block movie, of hash. One of the greatest <laughs> movies <laughs> ever to come out of hash. Hollywood. Stone's JFK. a big chunk of hash. That's it. There's some truth in a film you rarely see. Rihanna. What else do you want to say? She's pushing it hard these days. She's like... B-H-O. Yeah. On her Twitter account, she's always got photos of herself popping down. Yeah, she's uh, living large and smoking weed and uh, not caring about anyone. That's the way knowing. it should be. Yeah. And it's. I think it's great to have to, to have people like much. that to be no. to to be cannabis role model role models for youth. I don't think they're going to put her on the weedy box, so she don't really care too much. It doesn't matter. No. Who else? We if got? if it influences kids to start smoking weed. I think that's a good thing. Hugh Hefner. Of course oh, yeah. Hugh smokes weed. Hef is one of the coolest guys pretty much ever. Well. He probably eats it in pies. I'm hoping that he's chronic so that I can look forward to the longevity that he... Uh, yeah. Well, he's already in his 80s, isn't he? Or yeah. 70s, maybe. But man, he what a legend that guy is. And it's like, not just because he's always got a lot of ladies, but Playboy magazine is one of the coolest stories in American publishing of any anywhere or in world publishing. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's yeah, such a he's, fantastic uh, he's story. He's truly a success. Yeah. And probably smoked weed for a long time because it's not like it wasn't around when he was uh, kicking it hard right. as a younger well, I guy. Think Playboy was publishing articles that, you know, they were pretty hip to the whole thing, so yeah, might have to a look lot into of progressive that. stuff made it might into have to look into Playboy. that look for marijuana articles in Playboy yeah. just the articles so. just the articles <laughs> so what kind of weed product would Hugh be? Hugh Hefner? he's got to be fucking uh, something crossed with Viagra I'm thinking so, like, something the ladies <laughs> like a lot <laughs> I'm thinking like a chicken pot pie but instead of dill he's, it's, it's just killer weed Killer weed, yeah. yeah. He looks like he could smoke a fair bit of weed by that picture. He smokes like he Texas seems... Kush. Texas <laughs> Kush. <laughs> I only fuck with the Texas Kush, man. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> he likes some of the African stuff too. Who's next? Miley Cyrus. Well, let's not uh, talk about her. She's just know. smoking dispensary <laughs> pot. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Brian Cranston. She's in in flavored pa days, in though. flavored yeah, papers. She had, a, <laughs> she had a weed cake, didn't she? Was that her? She bought it. She bought well, it off she, of you. Somebody had, or was that a penis cake? She uses it medicinally to stop her twerking. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't seem like it's working. It they says yeah, you know you're a stoner when your friends, friends make you a Bob Marley cake. Oh, that was Marley. Cyrus. That's right. Pod TV. Woo. Yeah, man. Hell yeah. So, Brian Cranston is on the list. Huh? Interesting. Yeah. Although, the quote that they have for him says, pot always just made me sleepy. So... Oh, it's like he it, used to smoke... Yeah, he, he smoked it that one time and yeah. tried it a couple Anytime times. Anytime he smoked it, it made, him, it made him tired. So, he's not really a pot meth. smoker. Yeah, that's kind of weird. Yeah. yeah. So... It sounds like they're really reaching for 50 people to, that smoke weed. Yeah. It's like 50 people that may have tried weed that are in the media. Marijuana <laughs> users, they're called. Yeah. They're the most influential marijuana users. Yeah. Hmm, that doesn't sound like a user. Robert Downey Jr. Oh, yeah, he's kicked a lot of addictions <laughs> using weed. Well, <laughs> good for him, you know. Like, he was at a time in his life when the the whole world turned against him he was fucking high and he was caught and he was fucking rehab and rehabbing again so what's and, his quote uh, here he is now again one of the biggest stars in hollywood probably one of the most paid beloved iron man and sherlock holmes come yeah. on and he's everybody the comes back guys around, it you know? seems no matter what happens to anybody no matter how big the scandal they'll be back Mm -hmm. yeah. They'll absolutely all be but Michael Phelps is back. Uh, no one says boo anymore. He's back swimming. I don't know if he's still swimming. No, I think probably. so. I, I think don't he think is. Stop him. So I don't know. Madonna. What can you say about Madonna? Of course she smokes weed. She's smoking the exotic shit. She's smoking like the, the real ties and right South before Indians. her Kabbalah meetings. I bet you. Pete two point oh is off What's to happening, the brother? periphery. Pete. Yeah, you know, she, uh, speaking, What's there's that? a weird mix there, Al, you'd be interested in this one. The Sherlock Holmes movie, which featured a lot of hermeticism, 
Have you seen this Sherlock Holmes oh, yeah. movie? Yeah, yeah. Well, it was directed by Guy Ritchie, who is a hermeticist, and he's married to Madonna, who I guess is right up the same alley there. So there you huh. go, Al. Interesting. They, uh... Yeah, well, I was doing his hermetic show yesterday. I was looking up the idea of hermetically sealed. Yeah. Which is... So, oh, it was there. It's an, something that's airtight, but the seal comes from Hermes. And it's a secret. That's why it's called hermetically sealed. <laughs> well, it's because you're supposed to. The seal is seal a secret. Seal yourself off to yourself, or. No, this is a jar. Yeah. For having being airtight, right? Yeah, hermetically but, sealed. That's where the, the etymology of that word comes from. Yeah, because in. There's a in Hermeticism. There's this well, idea. See, Her Her Hermes was a great alchemist and a traveler. He was. <laughs> and you got to keep things. You yeah. got to keep things preserved and stuff. So he he knew how to do Ooh, shit. We well, should the, open a the, theme park. Yeah, Hermes, the alchemists Hermes themselves land. would have used that technique. It'd be great to get Hermes Hermes weed jars. <laughs> yeah. No, not herpes. <laughs> Someone said. <laughs> The herpes kush. No, I, um, I think we should open the word a hermit, which actually comes from another different word. Herpes, yeah. Even though it sounds in, like. In it fact, come from they that made word. a point when I was looking that up. Hermes. It said not to be confused with hermit. Hermit. Yeah. That comes from era era era. Yeah. Hermes didn't have anything to do with being a hermit. He was out there partying hard. Hermes. He was a fucking alchemist. <laughs> he was partying hard. Hermes was doing crazy shit, man. And j for. You know, for people who don't take a lot of this stuff too seriously, there's been a heck of a lot of people throughout history, very scientific people, like Newton, for instance, who was a devout hermeticist. Pythagoras. Yep. Pythagoras. Guys. How about Johnny Depp? <laughs> He's on the list. He's chronic. He's a big pot smoker. Who else? Hey, man, Johnny Depp, I think, probably does a little Phil bit of everything. Phil Jackson. He, he probably smoked a lot when he was here filming 21 Jump Street he's, in Vancouver. He's, he's in a band years. with Gibby from the Butthole Surfers. Like, let's face it. You... <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, Phil Jackson. We all know him from his days playing in the NBA. Don't know Phil. How about Sarah Palin? Pal 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 wow. Well, I figured that. I think she was smoking meth. I'm not too sure I'd smoke with her. <laughs> I wouldn't smoke with her. No, it would just drive you nuts having to listen to her. I wouldn't. Yeah, I don't think I'd want to be in a room with her for long enough to smoke with her. <coughs> Unless it was my room and she was quiet. I'd spike her. I'd spike her <laughs> joints with DMT and then just leave. <laughs> Justin Bieber. He <laughs> might be smoking weed. Oh, yeah, we know that. The Biebs. Yeah, he's one of the most <laughs> influential marijuana users there is. Yeah, he's big time, too. How about uh, fucking Maya Angelou? Oh, yeah, she's great. Big time puppet. Oh, it. She stashes it in her hat. She began smoking marijuana with abandon. Her hat's oh, actually a rolling God. tray. <laughs> it could easily be a rolling tray. It's got a wind, a windshield on the, on the side of it. Malmo Levine in the house. I don't know who that guy is. What's happening? <coughs> home people. People with homes. People, people who are at home. And the homeless. And the homeless. <laughs> the home free, as they prefer to be called. So, yeah, it was a bunch of... Uh, <laughs> the rent free. Celebrities <laughs> on the list. There is. But that got me to thinking, as some things do. So I looked up, and there's... There's... Not a lot of statistics about how many people smoke pot in the United States. Somewhere between 14 and 40 million is what the <laughs> estimates range to. 14 or 14 million and 40 million? 14, 14 million. million. <laughs> yeah, there's, 14 some, there's at least 14, yeah. but there could be as, could be as, as many 40, as 40 yeah. million. But no, 14 you know, million. We're to, pretty sure. 40 million. <laughs> so if you take those 50 people out of the mix, I wonder what all those other people do. Well. Right? Oh, they uh, cook your breakfast. They fucking <laughs> write your newspaper. They deliver your newspaper. They probably uh, clean your pool. They uh, cut your grass. They, uh, Everything else. Hey, they they teach your children. Stuff. They yeah. uh, patrol your streets. They're prosecuting 
the crooked. Sell your car. Yeah. Work on Build your. Build your car. Yeah. Visit. Right. You know. Tell you if you're sick or not when you go see a doctor. My, I know doctors. So isn't that doctors. really the uh, more important story rather than the fact that Brad Pitt does something? <laughs> Did he smoke weed? Okay. Well. Everybody smokes pot. Yeah. So it's pretty easy to be fucking Brad Pitt. Come on. I'm so fucking rich. It's got to be easy to be me. Like, really, if you're that rich, you somebody's cooking See, for it you, sh- somebody's driving for you. It should be, it should be a somebody's... list of 50 people that the DEA won't throw in jail <laughs> uh, for putting a pound of weed on so Instagram. Sure that money is <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, Snoop is number one on the list. Yeah, That's see, awesome. These celebrities who have all this money, and stuff, they have all kinds of shit to take care of. So that's got to be, like, a really annoying, you know? And that's got to, like, run you down. Fuck, no doubt. Yeah, all rich. this stuff all the time you have to deal with and take care of it must be exhausting. You know, so I don't think it is that easy to be It costs these guys. a lot. I think, I think that yeah, the, yeah, the, the, the deal is to make so much money that it doesn't matter who's stealing off of you, who's grifting their little bits, it still won't hurt what you got. Well, that could all be true. <laughs> and then you can just leave it all up to whoever. Yeah. I got people for I that, guess people if he for wants that. At any time, he could be on an airplane to the Caribbean and, you know. He could be there for as long as he wants. Really. Of course, but well, so that's, that's where make life a little easy. If we were that loaded, that's where we'd be doing the show right now. We'd, we'd <laughs> all fly it, down to Negril and do the show yeah. there today if we, we had should. that kind of dough. Well, but not? the point well, is, I'd be paying off warlords to go into different territories and get seeds and all kinds of shit. Four man. Times over, aren't you, Dave? Oh yeah, no. his his I art, his art <laughs> kingdom. <laughs> His art kingdom. Yeah. Right. That's right. But dime I make in the art dealing world <laughs> goes into the artifact acquisition world and the expensive George Bush related book world too. Ah. Oh. Spent a Brazilian on that. A Brazilian? Yeah. Oh. Like, Is that... I'm told Brazilians. Have you looked into the Sheriff line? Uh, I, Is there a book? I can still see a little bit of hair peeking out. Just read, read the death confessions of Otto Skorzeny and then go from there. Start. But it's definitely them. Well. <laughs> That's one of your favorite words, isn't it? Yeah, Is uh, triple on, triple negative. Back to the first negative, over again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Re-negative. Or, or Slide negative. to the side. Did I see my uh, CDO joke on, on camera? I don't know. What's your CDO joke? You guys all heard a CDO? Here, wait. Just say it to the microphone. Has everybody out there heard a CDO? Wait, if, if, if he asked if he could say it on camera, we might want to... Yeah, let's say it off wait. camera first. Yeah, we, wait, we, we oh, might no, want to hear it first. It's tasteful. It's tasteful. We're not CDO. Tough. Tasteful <laughs> it's, it's just like OCD, except the letters are in the right alphabetical order. Uh, waka, 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 waka. I did uh, hear that joke. Yeah. That was pretty good. I thought that was pretty good too. It's not bad. Uh, did you make that up? No, no, no. I heard that from someone who I told a joke to in exchange for that. Got any other ones? Yeah, I, I heard one today. It's pretty crude, but tell no, I right. don't know. We so don't. So, how can you tell a hippie <laughs> is on her menstrual cycle? Oh no. <laughs> oh, no. I have a blockbusters today, Dave. Nobody said anything. <laughs> 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 How can you tell a hippie's on her menstrual cycle? <laughs> She's only wearing one sock. Oh. <laughs> that's terrible. Well, that's a hard joke. A, a hippie man. chick told me that one, so it's already been pre proved by the target audience. <laughs> I guess so. Yeah, that's the way it works for all types of jokes regarding other races and people and stuff. Well, <laughs> gender and race. You know, hippie chicks aren't another race of people. No. Although you know, they you appear to I mean. be so. Sometimes. It's well, a subculture. All right, that that's I've enough jokes before we dip again. into any other <laughs> barrels. Yes. You might want to throw a sock over it before you do yeah. it. <laughs> so, um... <laughs> I was yeah, gonna make Mr. Marius joke. has been busy over there all show doing something. I don't know chicks. what he's up to. Wow, did the light ever improve since David got into the shot? <laughs> See how that's changed? Oh yeah, it still looks like a classroom. Yeah, he just brings a lot of sunshine. It's in. very classroomy. It's it's yeah. cool. I it like looks it. like black. How come it's so damn dark? I don't get the, the you're, light balance. It's no, that. your vision's going. I low. have Classy. no clue. We have, a, we have a light right here. It's always the same. The camera, she's different today. Something's wrong with yeah. the camera, I think. 
because that's we have a bright light shining right on us right now. It should be a lot lighter than that. I'm Whoa. a walking wet stream. <laughs> Maybe it's my white coat blinding the camera. Yeah, that's awfully white. So uh, Marius awfully must white. have some mighty white of me. I'm a sort of image to share Don't with us. Don't you watch my point? shores? I'll really? splash you. Well, almost. <laughs> Talk is degenerating. <laughs> Give me a couple seconds. Oh, yeah. This is wow, a little bit that. of an ambitious one, and I didn't quite finish it. Oh, I have uh, uh, a it's very ambitious. intelligent topic of conversation. We'll be the judge of that. I intelligent as the one going on in the chat right now, Where which says, what are the sexiest animals on the farm? And then somebody <laughs> answered, brown chicken, brown cow. So, yeah. Oh, man. Interesting. No, I'd like to <laughs> say a word about uh, the use of the word cure when it comes to cannabis and cancer. Now there's actually ah. a specific set of criteria necessary to be able to use the word cure amongst other people when it comes to cannabis and cancer. The criteria is the user must first have had proof of having cancer, then they have to have proof that cannabis was their only treatment, and then they have to have proof that they are no long, they no longer have cancer and are cancer free for five years. If you can meet those three criteria, you can use the word cure when it comes to cannabis and cancer. Well, Nobody has wait yet. Wait a second. No, that's the official. That's the criteria for all cures in the medical field. Well, but David, that just because I could at that same time, that person may have been drinking a lot of diet Pepsi. But yes. how do you know it was the cannabis or the diet Pepsi that that person was drinking well, that cured the cancer? If if you can prove that cannabis is the only medicine that people are investigating as a cancer cure that yeah. you used during the time at which you once had cancer right. and then you no longer have I cancer. I agree with your prince in principle, but it's I take mine. it. I take it's it. No, no, no. But I take you one further because I. You can absolutely not say that cannabis is a cure based on one person's anecdotal reporting and experience. You have to have empirical scientific testing that goes into these things, and that's when you can call something a cure. So it's even further than what you're saying. No, actually, Grinspoon would disagree with you. That because um, anecdotal evidence is anecdotal evidence is fine as long as you here. can meet the. Well, how do you know it wasn't criteria. the diet Pepsi, or how do you know it wasn't placebo, which you know thirty percent of diseases you can cure with just thinking about it? So that's why they do empirical testing. Well, anyway, nobody's met that criteria yet right. th that I've outlined, and until someone does then you're not going to have any support from the society to, to do that. Right. Now, right, I think that the uh, uh, anecdotal evidence, there's it hasn't really, been five years, you know, though. one person's story is an anecdote, but a thousand is a bibliography. Well, right, now so that's different. A, everything is made up of anecdotes. Right. Even the, but, but you don't need controlled studies <laughs> to I've got uh, the identify anecdote. anything because <laughs> we have a whole host of medicines that have been pre-approved before the, the whole re regimen of controlled studies was introduced. Uh, and uh, controlled studies, all it does is it makes sure that uh, you need millions and millions of dollars to be able to investigate medicine. And it prevents no. anybody who doesn't have a laboratory and a million rats uh, I'm not to, saying it should be a requirement. Medicine. I'm saying that in order to call something a cure, no, there's no. got to be some pretty rigorous testing that goes into that. Well, well I think it's okay me, to not this battle have a will placebo, rage on. And it's okay to just we'll test on humans and not well test into, on rats uh, in order to identify but, cures. But how do you know it's not just the placebo curing cancer? Huh? Placebo cures this cancer? is more of this opinionated journalism we've been talking uh, about. I, <laughs> I, I, there, the there's so much powerful. evidence already as cannabis as a tumor. It's all anecdotal. Well, well, it's now not all anecdotal. If you've been bit by a snake, get the anecdote. Anyway, I thought I'd share my insights. <laughs> on that. Take it or leave it. Take, Take it, it or leave, leave it. it. But but there there's a guy who got That's in trouble very the conclusive. who was part of the Central BC campaign mm -hmm. for running in the Terry Fox run mm -hmm. and screaming at the top of his lungs over and over again that cannabis cures cancer. Right. And even though there are the strongest of indications that cannabis could be the cure for cancer, that well, cannabis is the best phyto treatment for cancer that we know of, yeah. you can't say yet. The cannabis cures cancer. Correct. You don't have the proof. And unfortunately, like people like Rick Simpson, who w was speaking here at the art gallery in Vancouver, his whole tour was cannabis cures cancer. Yeah. They had cures in vinegar the is. Yeah. Uh, he doesn't understand vinegar that will actually cure a, pickles. A methodology vinegar will cure bland what is French fries. What is it? Right. Yeah. Exactly. Just anyway. turn off their microphone. I just want to share that. That was my smartphone. Just turn off their microphone. Jokes about. 
Not that I didn't. Hey, you you brought that to the you brought that to the table. It's a nice balance that David brings. It's a very odd balance. There's a little bit of low brow, a little bit of high brow. Yeah. So it's kind of like this. A little bit of raised brow. One raised eyebrow. Yeah. That's the rest of us have the raised eyebrows. Knitted brow. That's what you get when you mix the low brow and the high brow. Yeah. There's two other brows. I don't know who that was. <laughs> Where'd that guy come from? He came from the museum, which if uh, if you've never been to is quite remarkable, as is David and uh, most of the things around him. So come on down. They're on the second floor here in the building. Seven days a week from 5 o'clock till... I don't know. It's open <laughs> from opening till close. Yeah. <laughs> They just keep locking the cat in there. Where is that guy? I saw him. Oh, yeah? yeah. Cat Buds. got locked in there? Buds keeps getting locked in the oh. museum. Poor Buds. They shouldn't do that. He'll just end up pissing on the desk. How fucking scary is it to be locked in a museum, too, overnight, eh? Buds is just like, yeah, we're good. I got my own room for the night. Fuck you, yeah. Jimmy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they are uh, the house cats. All right. Marius, time going up. <laughs> All right. Mine disconnected. I hope we're still connected on here. But. He's, uh... So this is, uh... Got a picture. This is the Back to School show. Wait. Back to School. Back to School special. It's a Back to School special. <coughs> okay, so... I thought it, there we are. It's a school. And what is this? Oh, it's a school. Wow. It's a school. A school it's a joke of, uh, they fishes. used in the movie. Obviously, oh, so a school of fish. Finding Nemo. <laughs> finding Nemo. Oh, Finding Nemo. <laughs> wow. I've never seen that. So it's it's a very good movie. They're making a sequel. Everybody says finding it's very good. Dory. Yeah. Everybody gasps when I say, "Oh, I haven't seen that." You <gasps> what? <gasps> no, I'm just gasping that people would gasp when they when you say that. You know, if yeah. you gasp underwater, you'll <laughs> die. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna do Hogwarts, but. I think Dana and Gary huh. Wintel did, uh, did that one already, so... Well, that's pretty good. Uh, they have a cream for that. Pretty good Sorry, rendition. <laughs> <laughs> Cannabis cures Hogwarts. Yeah. <laughs> well, and it's uh, along the theme, too. So, well done. <laughs> Is that along the theme? Yeah, I, sorry, I didn't have time for the background, but there's a lot of that's fish. That's a lot of blue. <laughs> that's a lot of blue water and it would be. seaweed. So, we'll just coral. leave it like this, like the other coral. ones. Yeah. That's the rules. Yum. Well, there you have it. We've uh, made it through another day. Just the barely. shrub of the ocean. Going out tonight. Rose has uh, got a gig. Fairview Pub in Vancouver. Nice. You guys, are, anybody's in town uh, tonight, 8 o'clock-ish. So she's there with her band, and they're going to rock the place. Tell you about that next week. Wicked. You gonna get some footage? I don't know. She's got her phone. That's all. <coughs> but, so yeah. That thanks takes uh, to everybody for tuning in and joining in. We'll be here next week. Uh, tune in to Jer's show on Friday afternoon, four o'clock oh, yeah. specific standard time. That's right. Specifically standard. Specific standard. Yeah, we'll probably have. Um, some talk of the Boston Freedom Rally and what was going on there on the show and possibly some of the people who were speaking there will be on the show as well. Nice. Yes. Jody's out of town uh, putting her heels up somewhere, I'm hoping. Yeah, and, Jody uh, is in New York right now. In the Big Apple. Cool. Big Apple for the yeah. first time ever. She's never been there before. She was uh, at Boston for the Freedom Rally and again, they treat Jody like a like the princess when at all these rallies she's really the star of all these things now it's really remarkable to see it they have her yeah. up right at you know the big 420 moments or whatever just like at Hemfest and stuff it's pretty cool to see that all around the world you know our Canadian activism is having a huge effect everywhere There's and Jody Taylor. really is treated hey, like royalty everywhere we go and Hi. that's because she's doing such amazing work Where up there so. not yeah so. yeah this camera's on now that's okay <laughs> you don't have to change it just for my head <laughs> But yeah, um, Jody's in New York right now. Just went by there on the way back because she'd never been there before, and 
it was uh, she needed a little bit of a vacation, so I hope she's relaxing a little bit. She works cool. so damn hard all the time that. Yeah, I hope she gets a chance to uh, get out and have some fun. Mm -hmm. I'm and very I, I know envious. she's actually just thinking about work because I've already talked to her, and she's like, "I just wish I could get back to work." <laughs> I'm like, "What are you talking about? You're uh, the coolest uh, thing uh, on the planet. Have some fun." Yeah, God's no kidding. Sake. Yeah, I've never been to New York. Have I. Not gonna get a chance. No, they won't. For a me. long time, I don't think. I'm not allowed in the states, so that's out of the know. question. But yeah, I'd love to go. Got to be a fun place. I met two guys some years ago at the seed desk. They came up from Manhattan to buy seeds from us, and uh, they were so archetypal New Yorkers, like fucking the Bronx or whatever it was. <laughs> These guys were so much fun. They were high rollers. They'd been growing massive amounts of weed in Manhattan for a long time. And they wanted me to come to New York to visit them. Oh, man. Fuck. And if, <laughs> if I would want to do that with anyone, it would have been those two yeah. guys. Because they would have showed us all of everything. No doubt, that would have been fun. Hello, Shauna. What's going on? Shauna's in the house. Yo. What's up? So, yeah, we're going to get out of here. Um... Thanks to Al. That was fun. Thanks. Yeah, ma'am. Thanks to everybody in the chat. Hope you had fun. Everybody's saying, ah, oh, there's Taylor. Hi. <laughs> Surprise. Surprise. <laughs> yeah, we haven't seen much on this show lately, I know, Taylor. I know, I know. I know. I've explained Ooh. myself. I'll be back. All right, we'll just, <laughs> oh, I'll be back. just stand sorry. there for I a bit. I wasn't trying to. We'll just keep the shot shit. there. Hi. We just missed you. Yeah. joint or something. I am. Yeah, we're. We're going to have our own show in October, hopefully, and then I'll be back on this show lots. Baked in BC Girls, coming to yeah. Pod TV soon. Yep. I'm writing up scripts and such right now to figure out what the method oh. of madness will be precisely. That's right. Uh, that's fun. It won't be weekly, though. It'll be bi-weekly, because be I can't yeah. think of that much. <laughs> then it'll become monthly. Yeah, then it'll become monthly. You know, bi-weekly can actually mean twice a week. Or twice. Oh, I guess you're twice right. Twice a month. No, it can mean both. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, well, twice like bi a and bi-monthly could mean every two months. I don't or have enough shit to talk about two times a week. Nobody twice wants to week. listen to me for wow. Bi-weekly can yeah, mean twice a week. About anything. Twice a week, yeah, or two, every two weeks. <laughs> really? Yeah. I've looked this one up. Before. <laughs> I've had this argument before. Yeah. I was in here. That's All right. Funny. That's so, crazy. yeah, thanks a lot, everybody. We're going to get out of here. Yeah. Good. All right, I'm rolling things some HB 13. We just smoke, been smoking uh, Seedman's Haze the whole show. Stone. It's such good stuff, too. It Plus is. It's harmony very, very and good weed. other stuff. Some, some harmony, harmony some Haze. kish, some, some hash. Congolese scissor hash, some OG. Is that what that is? Holy shit. Awesome. Awesome. Oh, so yeah, <laughs> thanks for time. tuning I was in. Fish. I just I wasn't sure where that the conversation over there is hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe you loaded it for me. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> oh good. Okay. You guys should be on Pod TV. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm Marijuana Man. We'll see you next time. Peace and Pod.